exciting episode of the Million Dollar Peddlers. I'm Paper Guy. And I'm Mr. Magazine. And today we're going to talk about something that you absolutely hate. Hmm. Trust me on this one. Okay. Um, it's going to be about how so many people out there want to tracking. Give... They want tracking numbers. They do have no. Numbers. Two seconds after they buy it. <laughs> Wonder why it didn't arrive. No, 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 not that one. Um, we're going to talk about how so many people are so quick to both spend your money hmm. and are so quick to tell you everything that you're doing wrong in your business when only knowing part of the story. Mm -hmm. So why don't you get into a couple of examples, if you would, about um, the things like that. Well, for starters, I think the employees, um, whether they're pulling the order, packing the order, listing it, they see dollars. All they see is what I'm asking. You know, so a lister could see, wow, I listed 100 items today. They're $25,000 item. I listed $2,500 in stuff. But some of that stuff is still there from 10 years ago. Well, and mm -hmm. the other side of it, too, is if you take offers, you get it's not $2,500 right? worth of stuff. Exactly. It's $1,500 sure. worth of stuff. If you sell everything, which, which you, we never do. You know, and just like buying a collection of something, if I buy sports cards and they're basing off the, the highest price, well, I don't get the highest price. I get the sale price or the offer price, and I don't sell everything. So, you you know, you're really selling a small percentage of what they think you're really selling, you know. Well, and I brought this up because in my day job, I had to do um, an audit with a, a local business, and he was talking about some of the difficulties that he's had with some of his employees and we got to talking, and I said one of the problems that his employees had, and he agreed with me, was that they see a small piece of the overall picture. Right. And they may actually be 100% correct on that small piece. Yeah. In other words, uh, this gentleman ran a, um, ran a farmer's market, uh, mixed cider, all that kind of stuff. And as I was telling them, I said, yes, they see this and they may think, well, this is stupid to do it this way. And they would be right, except they don't see the overall big picture. Yeah. New York State may have laws that require something to be done, and the easiest way to comply with the law might be this. Although it may seem foolish in and of itself when you look at the big picture. Right, right. Um, or maybe he's got this one item up for sale, but he really doesn't want to sell a lot of it. It's just kind of there because people come in and, and ask sure. for it and want it. Yes, he could expand that part of the business, but he's into an area that he doesn't want to be into right. because what he's mainly into is, you know, the cider, let's say. Mm -hmm. You know, he doesn't want to be a coffee salesman. So the person yeah. who's in charge of the coffee area, well, if you double and triple expanded this and did that, mm. yes, you're right. I, I would do better on the coffee, yeah. but I would do worse on my overall business because it doesn't fit into. Right. So I know you've got a lot of different situations like that, and it, and it isn't just the... Um, it's not just the employees. How many times have you had customers on eBay tell you how poorly you do things? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that yeah, laugh says yeah. it all. <laughs> yeah, many times. Whether we pack it, well, list it incorrectly, or n not good enough, not enough pictures. It's never enough of whatever it is. You know, If you take four pictures of a Matchbox car, they want eight. They want the little corner of the, you know, the axle or something like that. So you're, you, know, you can't please everyone. Certainly not all the time either, but the you know you just can't make them happy. And one guy was uh, wanted a magazine from me, and I think I um, he it was fifty. He offered me forty through Amazon. I think you gave the refund on it, and he goes, "Oh, what do you care? You only paid a couple bucks for it, anyways." And I'm thinking, "How does this guy know what I paid for anything? You know, that's an <laughs> assumption, right?" I mean, like you know, and what if I did? Whether I paid it? What if I got it for free? It really that doesn't matter. I still have an item that's valued at fifty bucks, and he's willing to pay forty. You know. Right, well, plus you've got to store it, you've got to take, you know, you sure. had to pay to get it listed, you had to pay to get it yeah. found, you had to pay to get it packed, you took the risk that it would sell, you took the risk that Amazon wouldn't suddenly say, yeah. oh, this is a uh, overpriced thing, even though it may not be, and then it's dead sitting in a box, dead for a while, you know, forever, basically, because right. it's not like you go back through the Amazon boxes, yeah. and so on. Um, table of contents that was another one or you know i would do this and i'm trying to think of there was there was somebody or other that emailed you the other day about something and they were making some outlandish statement and we looked and they had no items listed <laughs> and you know you've got 140,000 items listed and they're telling you how you're supposed to be listing these 140 140,000 yeah. listings yeah and it, it it may work if you are a a 
you know, you've got 12 items listed. Yes, you can take 40 pictures of each. Right. And if you're just doing it on the side and you don't really care about the money, yeah, you can you can take incredible pictures of everything. It changes when you're doing it as a business. It definitely does because you do have to, you know, there are economies of scale and there's only so much time you can put into something. Right. And if you have a, a May 1971 Hot Rod magazine, how much time can you put into listing it? What's, what is the maximum price, ungraded, what is the maximum price you can get out of a February 71 Hot Rod magazine? 15, 20 bucks 20, yeah, 15, 20. most? Yeah, right. Are you going to take 18 or 12 pictures of that? Right. You're not going to. It's, it, it, it's not cost-effective to do so. Yeah. Or am I going to find out on page you know, 62 if they're talking about a you know, prototype Corvette or something like that? You know, it's just not worth it. You know? No, right, right. But they, because that is the one thing that they are interested in, that's what they think that you should do or because right. they listed one item one time and they, they put all this care into it. Um, and, and that leads to the second part, which is spending other people's money. And everybody loves to count people's money, and everybody loves to spend people's money. And they'll love to tell you how, you know, uh, this should have been sent out in a box. Well, sir, it's, uh, you know, it's an, uh, yeah. no disrespect, but it's an $8 comic book. Yeah, and if I go. sent every $8 comic book out in a box, I'd lose money selling them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that, that's wonderful on a, you know, on a obviously graded comic book. You're going to send out double yeah. box, as a matter of fact. I mean, wrapped up double sure. box because that's fragile. Yep. And, you know, on fragile things, you will. Well, a comic book, one piece of cardboard and, uh, you know, padded envelope, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time, mine get there safely. Yeah. Uh, probably even a little bit higher yeah, than sure. that. Sure, yeah, exactly. You know, so the one time in a million, the person's telling you it should have been shipped in a box... You'd go again. You'd go bankrupt doing that. Sure. Yeah. Um, so these are some of the issues out there, but I, I do definitely try to step back when I'm at like a, a flea market or whatever, um, and think I would probably be running things differently. However, I don't know all the ins and the outs. Right. He hopefully has some kind of a business plan. Whoever the dealer is that explains why they're running it the way that they are. And there are, as we've spoken many, many times, there are thousands of different business plans out there. There's one gentleman who sets up at the public market, uh, local flea market. He sells things for a dollar a piece. Well, I buy things to make money off of him. I do make money off of him. Yeah. He could make more money than a dollar a piece off, off of these items. However, his business plan is he's just offloading them. Right. Um, I'm so he sells a thousand items a week and he makes 500 a week. That's his profit. You know, he doesn't care. That's he it. doesn't care because, and, and here's the whole thought. He's obviously paying less than a dollar a piece to be right. able to do it. Yeah, I mean, exactly. he's not paying $5 a piece right. and selling it for a dollar. So he's picking these things up for 10, 20 cents a piece, <clears throat> five cents a piece free. Who even knows? Yeah, right. exactly. Um, and for him, it's not worth it to go through it all. He just puts it out in boxes and sells it. Um, I do remember there was a gentleman years ago and it sticks with me. I used to buy a lot of sports cards from him back when I used to go to the sports card show, some of the larger shows, because he had very, very reasonable prices. Mm -hmm. And I would always spend, you know, $50, $100 with him back when that was a lot of money for me to spend. I'd yeah. save up and I'd cool. see him at a show and spend $50 to $100 with him. You get more bang for your buck with him than if you went somewhere else. You come home with a lot more cards than you would if you yep. went to a few different dealers and paid higher prices, sure. But I remember somebody was going around selling cards, and they said, do you buy cards? And he said, I do, but I would like you I, I would like to save you some time as well i would like you to take a look at what i'm selling mm -hmm. and the prices that i'm selling them for <laughs> yeah, right. in other words it might guide for a hundred dollars i'm selling it at 75 right. i can't give you a 50 on it if i'm selling it at 75 sure. right um mm -hmm. and, and that's always stuck with me because that was his business plan and he did yeah. well he Every show where I saw him, he'd get 50 to to $100 out of me, and I'm sure I wasn't the only person yeah. because he was selling stuff less than guide, whereas a lot of other people would still go to the shows with the same cards <laughs> week after week or okay. month after month um, as well. And nothing wrong with his business plan. He had it thought out. Yeah, I'm sure other dealers went to his table and said, Jeez, why is he selling that for fifty bucks? Well, they probably, a lot of it was probably sour grapes because oh, yeah. they sell him moving stuff, yeah. and they're like, well, of course he's selling. He's got it for 50. 
well, sir, if you've had it sitting in your in yeah. <laughs> your table for the last 14 shows at 75, maybe you should sell it for 50. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But do try when you're out there and you see somebody or other running their business, try not to offer unsolicited advice um, because a lot of times that rubs people wrong. Um, certainly, or, or, or ask, a ask, why do you do it this way? And sometimes you'll find out that, yeah, they hadn't thought about a different way of doing it. That's just the way that they did it. And other times you find out that they have a, a reason to do it. But if you show up at, at their table or you email them or you, you know, whatever way you talk to them and you're like telling them immediately what it is they're doing wrong. Oh, yeah, right. That kind of stops the conversation yeah. very, very quickly because nobody likes to hear about what they're doing wrong and why they're doing it wrong. There are a lot more tactful yeah. ways to do it. Sure. Um, a lot of people via email are not overly tactful. I don't know if you've ever noticed that or not. <laughs> yeah, in text, yeah. <laughs> yeah, someone, one of our friends uh, wrote me the wrong way. You know that recently. <laughs> Telling me I was uh, running my business incorrectly, buying all these big deals, and then, you know, he, he didn't think I should be doing it because, you know, the level of stuff that I have not listed yet well you're still buying all these deals and ebay's bad you're crying ebay's bad it, well it works for me i'm still these this deal may not be here in six months when ebay's better so i gotta d get it now and sit on it you know yeah eBay luckily I, luckily yep. i can sit on it and then you know in six months when it's worth selling these items that i just bought i'll make a killing you know it's a waiting game that's all yeah so hopefully that helps you a little bit out there uh do hit the like button that i think we all can agree yeah. on yeah and uh we will see you next video take care bye-bye